In this video, we're going to discuss the differences between hypothesis tests and effect sizes. I often get asked by students why both are necessary. Here's the short answer. Hypothesis tests like the one sample Z test and many others, T tests, analyses of variance, things like that, these are all about statistical significance, determining whether we believe we have good evidence to believe that an effect actually exists in the world. So hypothesis tests are about statistical significance. Effect sizes then are sort of about practical significance. So if a hypothesis test says, yes, there's an effect, the effect size tells you, should you care about that effect? How large is the effect? So let's illustrate through an example. Let's go back to that neuro IQ study we talked about in previous videos. So in this study, we collect a sample of participants, we give them this supplement neuro IQ for 30 days, and then we measure their intelligence by taking an IQ test. And we're looking basically to see if the new IQ of this group of participants who've taken neuro IQ is significantly different from the population average of 100. So let's illustrate, let's say, uh, first of all, let's just write down what we know. IQ scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. These are population parameters. This is just simply known about IQ scores. So let's say we did this study. Um, let's say we're funded by pharmaceutical companies who really want neuro IQ to be proven to be effective, right? So they give you a ton of funding to collect a million participants, okay? So N equals 1 million, just this huge, enormous sample. You're gonna give neuro IQ to a million people for 30 days, and you're gonna see their IQ after that 30 day period. And let's say you do that and you find that their average IQ after 30 days of taking neuro IQ is 100, Point one. So in this case, you're probably not too impressed, right? An average IQ of 100.1 is not much different than the population average of people who don't take neuro IQ, which is just 100. It's basically the same thing. But here's the thing. Look at the formula for the one sample Z test. N is part of this formula. The sample size factors in here. If you have an enormous sample size, you're dividing by something enormous. This is going to change your standard error to overall be much smaller. And here for the z-test, if you're dividing by something very small, that's going to increase the size of the z-test. Kind of hard to envision because there's some flip-flopping going on. But suffice it to say, if you have an enormous sample size, you're going to naturally have a much larger test statistic, which will yield a much smaller p-value, which makes it basically much more easy to sort of detect uh, an effect, to say that an effect is significant. So if that didn't make sense to you, let's kind of lay that out mathematically. So let's actually do the one sample z-test here. So in this case, we're going to have z sub x bar equals 100.1 minus 100 sample mean minus population parameter divided by 15, the standard deviation over the square root of your sample size. So in this case, over the square root of 1 million. And I'll just go ahead and tell you that if you plug this into a calculator, you're going to get a very large z-test statistic. It's going to be 6.67, which I'll go ahead and tell you if you plug this into a software, you would get a significant value. Your p-value would be less than 0.05. So at this point, if you're working for the pharmaceutical company, you can report back with happy results to say, yes, neuro IQ is effective. We found an effect. That effect is significant. But that's statistical significance. Let's now look at practical significance. Should we care? So let's calculate the effect size here. Remember how we sort of uh, interpret effect sizes. Anything between 0 and 0.2 is considered a small effect. Between 0.2 and 0.5 is considered a medium effect. And 0.5 and larger is considered a large effect. So let's go ahead and plug this in. D sub Z, Cohen's D for the Z test, equals, we have our same numerator, X bar minus mu, 100.1 minus 100, divided by, notice, this is now just standard deviation, not standard error. Sample size does not factor into the equation for the effect size. In fact, effect sizes don't care at all how many participants you collected as part of your sample. And this is what makes it unique and different than hypothesis tests. So in this case, you're going to get 100.1 minus 100 over 15. This is going to come out to a very tiny value, 0 0.007. So look, how do we judge that? It's essentially a small effect. And in reality, it's so close to zero that we would almost say there's no effect at all. So in this case, we have a statistically significant result, but not a practically significant result. So this is why reporting both is really helpful. You can tell people, yes, we have good evidence to believe there's an effect 
and that effect is large, and so we should care about it. Or in a case like this, which is of course a pretty extreme case, you can kind of get more detailed to figure out that, okay, there is a significant effect, but we shouldn't actually care about it. So this helps you to basically make decisions. It helps you to determine what you can do with your results and what you should do with your results. So the standard in most fields is to basically report both. Give people the hypothesis test results and the p-value, and give people the effect size as well.